Hi guys, um, it's just Leanne again, and I knew some of you had struggled with the assignments this week, and I just wanted to give you some additional help on how to answer those questions that ask you to use the vocabulary word in a sentence so that I can understand, or whoever reads it understands, that you actually know the meaning of the vocabulary word. So I've just taken some examples uh, from actual ones that um, members of the class have turned in and I'm gonna go over those and so don't feel like I'm singling you out or anything if I've chosen yours as an incorrect response but I want to show you what you can do to fix it and what was wrong with it um, so I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples and hopefully this will be enough to get you on the right track so that you can fix any errors that you've made okay so um, the first incorrect sentence um, the term is ex post facto and here's the incorrect sentence. He knew ex post facto that she had previous charges against her. Um, the term ex post facto is referring to um, the fact that is unconstitutional for uh, the Congress or any legislative body to enact a law that makes something illegal um, and kind of goes back retroactively. So for example, today, if it's perfectly legal for me to own a ballpoint pen, um, I'm allowed to have one. But let's say tomorrow Congress enacts a law that says that um, it's illegal for me to own a ballpoint pen, and they decide to arrest me because I had one today. That's going back in time. When I was in possession of the ballpoint pen, it was perfectly legal. So it's really not fair. In fact, it's unconstitutional for the Congress to punish me for something um, that is now illegal. Um, for something um, that was previously legal. So when I read this sentence, he knew ex post facto that she had previous charges against her. First of all, it leads me to believe that this student doesn't know what ex post facto means because it looks like from the context of the sentence, it just looks like he found out later um, that she had previous, it's like he's almost like, oh, he found out after the fact. Um, so that's an incorrect usage of the term ex post facto. Now the next student, um, was correct in in her use of ex post facto. It says Larry Lawyer's argument for his case was that the law used against his client it should be was an ex post facto law because when his client committed the crime it was legal even though now it is not. See the difference? It, um, you know this in the second example the student created a story that helped me understand that the student knows what ex post facto means and used it in the sentence in such a way that, you know, it wasn't just a definition. Um, it actually incorporated the, the use. When you're at a higher level of thinking as you are now in college, you have to be able to use those terms that you've memorized, those terms with the, the vocabulary, the definitions that you've memorized, and then actually apply them and use them in real sentences and use them whenever you speak and make sense whenever you use them. Um, the next example is, sometimes my alibi for running behind is traffic. Well, that's incorrect, and here's why. Because an alibi is very specific. It means I was accused of murdering my boyfriend on Saturday night. And if I wasn't murdering my boyfriend on Saturday night, I must have been somewhere else. Well, that somewhere else is my alibi. It's not that I was late for something or that I, you know, it's specifically... I wasn't there, it wasn't me. So your sentence that you're using should help me see that. So the correct sentence is, Sarah's alibi was that she was at school when Lori was murdered. And that is absolutely the correct usage of the term alibi. Um, one more where I'm going to do incorrect, incorrect. Um, consideration, the terminology that you were given this week for consideration had to do with contract law. And when you have contracts, you have to have proper consideration. That means there has to be a valuable exchange of something. Somebody has to gain something um, and lose something, and somebody has to gain something and lose something. That whole process is called consideration, and it can be very confusing. And I think a lot of you, when you think of the word consideration, you think of the other use of that word, like, boy, you know, Grandma was so considerate when she thought of me on my birthday. That is not what the legal term consideration means. 
Also, when a judge is making a decision, they may consider the arguments, but that is not what we're talking about here. What we are talking about is that in order for a contract to be valid, there has to be an exchange of something of value between two parties. So let's, let's look at the two examples. So the incorrect example is the consideration for this contract is that the basement will be fully furnished. Now that sounds like it's really close. It just isn't containing the other part. What else is happening? Okay, what are you getting in exchange for the basement being fully furnished? And hopefully when you look at the correct one, you'll understand the difference between these two sentences. Okay, so the first one is only talking about one side of the contract. It's only talking about the basement being fully furnished. Well, is somebody paying for that? Like, what, what the, is the other party getting? In the correct sentence, it says, Misty gave $1,000 as consideration in the contract with Nigel for him to build her fence. Do you see how in that sentence, it's properly using the term consideration to talk about both sides? giving something in the contract. Misty's giving a thousand, Nigel is using his time to build her a fence. That exchange of goods, that exchange of value is called consideration. I know it's kind of complicated consideration, that's why I use this one as an example, um, but I hope this helps you a little bit and it helps you write those sentences better when you do your homework. I really need to see at this stage in the game, you guys are at the end, at this stage in the game, I need to see that not only do you understand vocabulary words, but you are able to use them in sentences um, and that you can, you know, incorporate them into your everyday speech. Because when you work in a law office, that's exactly what you'll be doing. You'll be using these terms and you'll be using them when you talk to attorneys and when you talk to clients and you want to sound like you know what you're talking about. Some other examples of, um, I've got three more examples of correct sentences that I just wanted to point out. Um, in the next correct sentence, jurisdiction is the term. So the correct sentence is, if Sarah committed the crime in Maryland, the state of Maryland has the case because of jurisdiction. Okay, so that, that when, I, when I read that sentence, I know that the student understands what jurisdiction means. The next one, Stephen Avery was the appellant when he appealed his case to a higher court. Um, in that uh, sentence, the term was appellant. A lot of you kind of messed that up a little bit. I was surprised. Appellant is somebody who appeals something. Um, so this sentence uh, works. Um, the last one I just want to point out before I end the video is some states do not have a statute of limitation. That's the term, that's the term statute of limitation, or amount of time you can file a case after the crime has been committed for rape. So that's a clever way of letting me know you understand the definition and using it in a sentence. You could say some states do not have a statute of limitation for rape. I probably would think that was half right um, because I'm like, do you really know what a statute of limitation is? You need to be mentioning time frames to me in this sentence is what I would say. But this student cleverly went ahead and put in the definition right there in the middle. So it reads, some states do not have a statute of limitation or amount of time you can file a case after the crime has been committed for rape. So I hope that helped. Um, I hope that helps uh, those of you who struggled with these assignments to write the sentences with the vocabulary. Good luck. I'll be posting another video perhaps later tonight as I go over the quiz. All right. Have a good evening.